Welcome back. This video I'm going to go over GDB part 2 and basically go over a few more commands and stuff that you can do with GDB that will make your life a lot easier. I wanted to also say thank you guys for the feedback in the last video and I appreciate it a lot. Feedback helps me to make new videos, improve upon videos, and just help me overall in editing and everything like that. So I'm very grateful that you guys gave a lot of feedback in the last video. So we'll use the code from last time and let's launch GDB. And let's, let's break end main and let's run the program. So what we can do now is we can do a command called this assemble. As you can see, this arrow will tell us which instruction we're on. And this can really, really help us understand what is going on underneath and really understand what the program is doing. This is really helpful for debugging lower level things. And it's also very helpful if you want to learn assembly, if you, have, if you don't know assembly already. And if you don't like the gas syntax, you can do set disassembly. I think it's this, yeah, disassembly flavor and do Intel. If you redo it now, it's on the Intel syntax, which for some people is more readable. Well, for me, especially, it's way more readable. But again, it allows you the choice if you like one or the other. Now what we can do is we can actually kind of see it in action. If we do N, we can go back and we can see it's being, 11 is being pushed onto the stack here. We go N, we can see we're now on the call to Funk. We can do N, as you can see, we're here where the string end is being loaded into RAX and then it's going to be moved into RDI and then puts will be called. And as you can see, we've moved past all of that. The leave instructions called and ret is also called afterwards. This is really helpful for understanding how assembly works, like I said before, and overall it's also pretty neat. And yeah, use this to learn assembly if you'd like. Now I'm going to be going over a new command, which is called backtrace, and I've made a new program for it also. So let's break at fib. Let's run the program. As you can see, we're on fib n equals 20, which is what we called. And let's hit next and let's step in. Next, step in, next, step in. I think this is enough, but let's do backtrace. Now, this shows us all the function calls we've made. This is really helpful. And also, if you have, if the, which, I mean, they're always on, but the debug symbols really help us figure out where an exact line number where we call this. Because as you can see, this is line number 10. If we go here, we're on line number 10. And the rest of them are called on line number six. So it's very precise. This makes debugging, especially recursive functions, much, much easier because we know where they were called and we can also see what the parameters were. This makes it easy if, let's say, for example, way down on the call stack, there's some function that gave a garbage value. We can see what the value is right here. And this is the magic of backtrace. And we also have stack frames that we can look at, but I'm not gonna go over that in this video. But backtrace is super helpful. As you can see, we're back on our previous code and I'm gonna show one really nice feature, which is called GDBTY. And we can activate it by doing control X A, or we can type in TY enable. However, now we can actually see our source code and basically view it as we step through it. Now, there's a couple of things you have to note. Doing the up and down arrow keys won't actually bring commands or anything like that, or the previous command. You have to do control P to do that. The next thing is the focus window. Basically, since the blue area is around the, the source window, we want to change it to the command window, basic, I guess, to run some commands or whatever. We can do that by doing focus CMD. I'm going to do focus source for that. Now we, we can also do is we can do layout ASM to show the assembly of it. And for my, 
for my viewing pleasure, I'm going to add this so I can... Sorry, I'm having really like trouble typing for some reason. And let's go back to Layout ASM, which now it fixed it. So we can do Control X2. So now we bring back the source window too. So we have both the source and the assembly. We can also do Layout Reg to show the registers. So this is also very useful. Let's say you're debugging assembly. That's the biggest uh, like advantage I could see. So you have the assembly and you have the registers on top to see both of them and see them update and live. So this is really useful for people who like more of a graphical view. And I generally don't use it, but maybe one day I probably will. And that's about it for this video. On my next video, I'll actually go over LLDB which I feel like is pretty similar to this, but it's also very different. It's for my Mac users, since I use both Linux and Mac, so I have to switch between LLDB and G GDB. So I would like to make a video on that since LLDB in my opinion is a little bit more, it's a little bit less intuitive to use. However, it's still great and I will make a video on that. And another video I'll go over reverse engineering with GDB and it'll just include GDB while I try to like do some crack knees, I guess. And that was also recommended by a commenter, which I'm very thankful for you guys giving me feedback. Anyways, thank you guys. I appreciate your support and let me know what else I should make.